Hi, this is James Watson, and this is how I booked 170 discovery calls in 14 weeks with enterprise execs in saturated B2B niches by leveraging simple LinkedIn groups. I call it the LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint. And as you can see, there's a simple four step part of this process to generate these results. So first of all, if you've never heard of me at all, you'll find me on Twitter X and LinkedIn. So I'm at LinkedIn underscore King on Twitter X and you'll find me at LinkedIn. I, I also run um, a LinkedIn group called Audience and Clients as, and uh, also an Audience and Clients group on Facebook as well. There's links to both of them there. So if you want more value, come and join my groups. So what I'm going to talk, to, talk about in this video is exactly the story behind how I achieved this result. And these are the key elements. So I'm um, going to uh, intrude why this is, why I've been working on this, why this is so important, who this is for, who this is not for, why one, there's one thing that's killing your business right now and this fixes it. Then I'm going to talk about case studies. I'm going to get into specifics of actual numbers in multiple businesses that are following the same process of getting results. Then I'm going to break down what the LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint actually is. As I said, there are four key steps to it so um, that is step does uh, step one is outreach step two is capture step three is invitation step four is actually the discovery call itself so i'm going to break down exactly what those steps are also some common myths about linkedin groups there's a lot of false information about groups that i'm going to dispel for you on this call and then i'm going to explain why this is so important right now why you need to why it's more important it's harder than ever to book calls and why this is approach uh, helps to solve that problem so let's just dive straight in okay so first of all this is something i've never shared before it's a proprietary four-step process i use with my private clients that's booking an average of 12.1 qualified calls with enterprise execs in ridiculously difficult markets every single week right so these meetings are 100 percent organic they don't require any events or paid ads or AI avatar teams or cold pitching crazy offers and anagans. And this entire process actually filters out 99.99% of all the unqualified prospects before you speak with them and clearly positions you as the expert authority when you do. So using this approach, in the last 10 weeks alone, I've booked 82 discovery calls and held 50 of them for a risk management and cybersecurity managed service provider client. One of the toughest markets you can ever try to generate leads and opportunities for. 82 discovery calls, 50 held in 10 weeks. And for an enterprise software and consulting client, we held, we, we generated 70 discovery calls and held 46 of them. Now this doesn't only work in really tough, competitive, high value B2B niches. It also works if you do high ticket B2C. As I have a client in financial space, financial advisor, and I booked 14 calls for him in the first 14 days of outreach using this approach. It's 14 calls in just 14 days. Now, full disclaimer, all three clients are based in the US and target the US market, which is the most competitive in the world. Before I dive right in and explain exactly how we do this, I know you're thinking, who the hell is this guy? I've never heard before with a, with a, with a funny accent. Well, I said, I'm James Watson. I've generated a million dollars in sales in 14 days with my own product launches twice. That's a million dollars gross in sales in 14 days. And I did it two times. I've also run multiple seven-figure businesses in coaching and e-com, trained thousands of business owners online and at live events. And I sold one e-com brand for multiple six figures. And for the last few years, I've been quietly running a boutique private client business that's also generated well over seven figures working part-time. In fact, I've now worked with two clients for five years continuously and several more for three plus years, all continuously. So why do my clients almost never leave my agency and consulting services? It's because I've dedicated my entire being to solving the single most important problem that every business owner has on the planet, which is booking a flood of high quality phone appointments with qualified prospects consistently and cost effectively. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it step by step so you can do the same. And by the way, if you want to get a copy of this document, go and join my 
uh, and, and this document here, I'll tell you exactly where you can get it uh, towards the end. So I am also the author of the LinkedIn Secrets Playbook, which is how I booked 190 meetings in 10 months for one client with execs from Visa, Capital One, Amazon, Salesforce, Twilio, City, and Ver Verizon, and the IMF, all via LinkedIn and email. So I have a track record of booking meetings, but that was uh, a process using uh, leveraging LinkedIn events and LinkedIn groups, but the events were, were critical for booking the meetings. Events are very cool, but um, so yeah, so that was an underground guide, 34 pages and 5,249 words went viral on Twitter in 2023. All about I booked 190 meetings in 10 months with the power of LinkedIn groups and events. But the, the LinkedIn groups to discovery call blueprint I'm about to share is entirely new. Okay. And it works even better than the LinkedIn secret playbooks. No events are needed whatsoever. All we need is the group. And although events work just as well as ever every single month, so I love simplicity and I love the 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 extra results, the even greater results that have been generating with my clients as a result of this even simpler strategy. But definitely check out the playbook if you're at all interested in leveraging events. I break it down exactly how I achieve those kind of results consistently for, for my clients. But with that said, let's get to the brand new information. So first of all, who is this for and who is this not for? So let me be clear. This is for you if you are the owner or partner responsible for generating revenue in your business. If you are looking to grow significantly your revenue and profit in the next six to 12 months, if you know your ideal prospects are on LinkedIn, the number one business network in the world, you have a high ticket product or service that adds undeniable value to your clients, you have case studies and testimonials that clearly demonstrate tangible results. You're frustrated with past failed attempts at marketing and sales development. You've been let down by agencies who promised the earth yet consistently failed to deliver. And you're looking for a long-term strategy that delivers results in, in just a few days or weeks. And you want to avoid short-term tactics, fixes, hacks, or stunts that stop working as soon as you implement them. However, this is not for you if you're not a business owner or equity partner responsible for growth, if you're not looking to significantly grow new business revenue in the next six to 12 months, if you're a startup without any clients or any funding, you haven't produced any documented tangible outcomes yet for your clients, your ideal clients are not B2B organizations or senior execs or business owners, your lifetime customer value is under five figures, or if you believe marketing and sales are necessary evils rather than opportunities, to educate and help other people. It's also not for you if you believe that your product sells itself and that generating millions in sales should be easy. It's also not for you if you're not willing to invest $1 in marketing in order to generate $5 to $10 or more in sales. And you're not, if you're likely, if you'd like to micromanage unimportant campaign details that delay project execution, or you're not willing to make decisions quickly in order to generate an outrageous ROI. Finally, if you prefer to hire expensive, unproven people in-house rather than work with better value, performance-based external consultants. So let me be clear. There's this one thing is killing your business. Whether you only want to take on a few high-quality clients or you're looking to scale your clients and team fast, here's the bottom line. There's only one thing you need in order to acquire the quantity and quality of clients you want every week, month, and year. Here's what you don't need, by the way. Fancy websites, logos, branding, dozens of amazing case studies, although, although they help. The latest flavor of the month, magic software tool. There's plenty of those. But what you do need instead is simple, although not easy. You need to generate consistent, qualified appointments every week with your ideal future clients. And anyone who says otherwise is smoking the crack pipe with the ex-mayor of Toronto. By the way, you should look that up, seriously. When I first started my agency, I had no clients, no website, no case studies, and no proven sales process. Now, for sure, I had a great plan, and that had worked for others, but I had no first-hand experience. So in the first month, I booked 12 calls, but I had no idea what I was doing. I made tons of mistakes, but I learned quickly, call by call. With real-time feedback, I tweaked my messaging and offer. And by call number 12, I got my first client. And from month two, my sales conversion rate improved significantly, and I got six more clients in the next 90 days. Without those qualified calls, however, I'd be stuck forever with zero clients. 
So let's be clear, getting consistent qualified phone calls every week will help you solve every part of your sales and marketing process. Brian Tracy, the multi-decade author and speaker, said it well in his book, The Art of Closing the Sale. If you're starting to get sales or if you're getting, if you're getting started in sales, then you just need to speak to 100 potential prospects without even trying to sell anything. The key is just to have real conversations with real people. And if you can, try and help them. If you do this one thing, it will be impossible not to make sales. And it's actually very simple. The number one reason why business-to-business service providers, consultants, and advisors fail to make sales is this. They do not have a regular and predictable stream of qualified phone calls with A-grade prospects. Now, once you do have enough quality phone calls, then even without trying to sell, even without millions of case studies, Even without a proven service market fit, you still can and you will make sales. So a consistent stream of qualified phone calls means that you'll be able to onboard as many new clients as you want. You decide how many you want to accept. You can accept these new clients wherever you want and on your terms. You have the ability to generate clients on demand. You call the shots and in full control. And for as long as you're in business, this approach will never get old, disappear, be discontinued, get rejected or switched off or simply become outdated. But remember, although the idea of getting consistent calls is simple, making it happen is not, or at least it wasn't for my clients. You see, I helped them generate hundreds of qualified leads. But when it came to trying to book them on calls, they often went full Lord Lucan on us. Again, Google is your friend. However, after we started to leverage one specific and proven psychological principle, everything changed. To the point where booking calls with ideal client profiles is now a formulaic, repeatable, and 100% predictable process. And by the way, these aren't just calls with random Joes and Janes on the interwebs, however. They're all A-grade exec level professionals on LinkedIn. I speak all the time with people who are fed up with the poor lead quality they're getting from platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and the like. Whether they use ads or organic outreach, it doesn't matter. It's hugely frustrating to drop thousands on Facebook ads. One of my clients did to only to have your time wasted with a bunch of low quality, unqualified ne'er-do-wells that ghost you immediately. No such problem with LinkedIn, however, where you'll only find the highest quality level of serious professionals. LinkedIn is where I found all of my best clients, including the ones I mentioned earlier, who are now five plus years into a continuous pandemic surviving working relationship. So it's very simple. If you do not yet have a guaranteed, as predictable as night follows day, repeatable process of booking calls with your highest caliber, ideal prospects, then you'll never have enough control of your business in order to generate the revenue you need. And instead, you'll be at the mercy of the latest fads, tricks, and Ponzi schemes being spammed on social media and cold email all day. But thankfully, there is a better way. But before we get to the blueprint itself, let me show you some actual results. So case study number one is an enterprise risk and cybersecurity managed service provider. So in 10 weeks, we generated the following without any paid media launches or organic content, purely from direct outreach. 92 calls agreed from 285 offered is a 32% call agreed rate to call offered rate rate. 82 calls booked from 92 agreed is an 89% call booking rate. 50 calls held from the 82 booked, so that's a 61% called hell to call booked ratio. And 30 sales qualified leads from 50 calls is a 60% call to sales qualified lead ratio. So put it another way, that's 82 out of 285 or a 28.7% call booked from call offered ratio. And 50 out of 285 or a 17.5% call held from call offered ratio plus 30 out of 285, or a 10.5% sales qualified lead generated from call offered ratio. And there's a table below here that shows you these account growth KPIs. But before we reach out to anyone, we need to get people to join our LinkedIn group. And I'm going to explain the main ways we do that coming up in the next section, which is section five. But for now, just look at these results in just 10 weeks. 873 new targeted connections, 139 new company page followers, 470 new group members. This is a rock solid base 
of new members to start our discovery call offer process. So here's the chart and check out these numbers. So these are real numbers. And what's important is the connection growth, 873 in 10 weeks, the company page follows 139 in uh, 10 weeks, group member growth, 470 new members in 10 weeks. And you can see week by week, I break down exactly how that how that group grow. And you can see the average. So average was 47 new group, group members per week, 47. And the average in LinkedIn connections, 87 per week. Now, to be fair, I've been helping this client grow their LinkedIn group since October 2021, which is why they have over 3,500 members now at uh, time of, of this video recording. And we've been targeting their members for events like LinkedIn Lives, webinars, and roundtables in the last 18 months with amazing results. And remember, 190 meetings in 10 months for one client, that's this client. Okay, and I break that down in the LinkedIn Secrets playbook, exactly how we do that. But what we'd never done before was to outreach directly to group members, inviting them to a discovery call and bypassing the need for any kind of event altogether. As soon as we started to do this, results were, I mean, pretty startling. And it turns out that a whole bunch of our group members were more than happy to jump on a phone call and discuss their situation, needs, and requirements. This is important because the vast majority of these people had no intention to raise their hand anytime soon to proactively book a call. Few of them would have, maybe for sure, but instead, when we reached out to them directly, about one in three were more than happy to have a private one-on-one -on -one conversation. And so here are the numbers. And what's even cooler than that one in three is that one in three of those held calls led to creating an actual sales qualified opportunity for their sales pipeline, ready to be progressed and closed. So look at the, the totals again for this 10 week period, 285 calls offered, 92 calls agreed, 82 calls booked, 50 held, and 30 sales qualified leads. So that's an average for this client of 9.2 calls agreed per week, 8.2 calls per week booked, 5 point, well, just five exactly calls held per week, five per week, and three sales, new sales qualified leads every single week. And this final chart here shows both of those charts together. So you can see the week by week growth connections, page followers, group members, and as well as the outreach, the offering the calls, the agreeing the calls, booking the calls, holding the calls, and then creating the sales qualified leads. So this gives you the concrete, reliable information. That I, and you can see just how well the marketing and the business development functions of the team were performing on a week by week basis. So, that, so that's case study number one. Case study number two, still an enterprise B2B client, this time it's enterprise software and consulting. Now this time, over a 13-week period, we generated 128 calls agreed from 377 offers. It's 34%. 74 calls booked from 128 agreed, which is 58%. 48 calls held from 74 booked, which is 65%. And 31 sales qualified leads from 48 calls held, which is a 64.5% ratio. Let's put it another way. That's 74 out of 377, or a 20% call booked from call offered ratio. 48 out of 377 is a 13% call held from a call offered ratio. And then finally, 31 out of 377 is an 8% sales qualified lead generated from call offered ratio. With a just, by the way, the small sum of a pipeline value of $550,000 in annual recurring revenue for this particular client. So here in this table, you can see their account growth. More than a thousand, a thousand and one LinkedIn connections were added over a 14 week period. 273 new company page followers were added. 806 new LinkedIn group members were added. So that breaks down as an average, 71.5 new connections per week, 19.5 page followers per week, and 57.6 new LinkedIn group members every single week. And in the next chart, these are the numbers for calls offered 
agreed, booked, held, and SQLs. So 377 calls were offered during that 14-week period. There, we, there was there's some follow-up with some of these with some of these people. Not tons. We're not sending thousands and thousands of messages, and these these follow-ups typically one week apart. 128 from those 377 calls offers. So 128 said yes. Let's jump on a call. 74 of them have been booked so far, mainly because my client doesn't want to have too many calls. They only want to have between three or five a week because it's the CEO, founder of the of the business that's taking the calls directly. It's not a sales team. So they're booking, they're just booking them according to the time available for, for the founder. And so there's a lot more still to be booked. Eight of those 74 have been held so far, and 31 of those 48 have resulted in sales qualified leads being added to their sales pipeline, which is just pretty amazing statistics. And I can tell you, this client is absolutely delighted with those results. Case study number three is a different market because I wanted to see what it would this work in business to consumer, in high end business to consumer services. So I onboarded a financial advisor client and applied the same principles to his business. And this is what we did in just the first six weeks of outreach for him. 33 calls agreed from 100 offered. So 33% call agreed rate. 16 calls booked from the 33 agreed. So that's 48%. 11 calls held already from the 16 booked, 69%. 11, this is the key one, 11 sales qualified leads from 11 calls. Every single one of those 11 calls were great calls and every single one is now a rock solid prospect for this financial advisor so that's 16 out of 100 or a 16 percent call booked from call offered ratio and 11 percent call held from call offered ratio and 11 percent sales qualified lead generated from call offered ratio which is amazing incredibly quickly so this is the growth this is what can happen just in a space of a few weeks so there's 463 new LinkedIn connections in just six weeks, 77 per week on average. 44 company page followers and 177, starting from scratch, 177 new LinkedIn group members, average of 30 a week. And the outreach stats, as you can see, 100 calls offered, 33 agreed, 16 booked, 11 held, and 11 sales qualified leads. So the average of 5.5 calls agreed per week, 2.7 held, booked, sorry, 1.8 held. And that's only because that's averaging out all these weeks where there's no, really, the averages should just be these two weeks here. But I'm averaging out over the whole six-week period. It's really more the totals that matter, right? As you can see, because it's only really week three that we started the, uh, we qualified people. Week four was when we started the outreach. So really, they should, they should be averaged over three weeks. So you should really double that. Uh, we should double these numbers for a, a realistic average, but just being really cautious and conservative over six weeks, there is what the numbers look like. So case study number four. So that's all well and good, but I didn't want to stop there because I also track the combined numbers I generate across all clients using this LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint. I now have four that I'm, um, I'm managing campaigns for following the same principle. It's certainly true that any data from one campaign individual company is not statistically significant. There's too many variables that need to be tested in different contexts to know if the method will produce consistent results predictably and reliably over time. So here's a breakdown of all the numbers from all the client group campaigns combined into one. Remember, I only started this approach in May 2023. And even though that's not long ago, these numbers are across different groups, companies, industries are certainly already statistically significant. In fact, at the time of writing and recording this call, this video, 950 discovery calls have been offered to LinkedIn group members using my proprietary outreach methodology and messaging, the LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint. So here are the overall numbers, for actual quantifiable and verifiable results for those first 14 weeks. 280 calls booked, agree, sorry, 280 calls agreed from 950 offered. That's a 29% call agreed rate. 170 calls booked from 280 agreed. That's a 61% call booked from agreed rate. 
103 of those have been held from the 170 booked, so 61% so far, and 73 sales qualified leads from those 103 calls. So 71% sales qualified lead from calls held ratio. We'll put it another way. 170 out of 950 is an 18% call booked from call offered ratio across all clients. 103 out of 950 is an 11% call held from call offered ratio. And 73 out of 950 is a 7.7% sales qualified lead generated from call offered ratio. So at this point, nearly a thousand people that we have invited to a call, we've, we've got agreement from 280 of, of those 950 and 170 have already been booked, 103 held and 73 have become sales qualified leads. So this is why I can say that we're booking on average now for our clients, 12.1 calls booked per week and 7.4 calls being held, again, across multiple uh, accounts. But in total, that's the, the volume of calls being booked and held right now. So in summary, the LinkedIn group to Discovery Call Blueprint works for completely different businesses with amazingly similar and consistent results. So now you're crystal clear that this approach gets results. Let me break down the whole process for you in simple steps. Here is the LinkedIn group to Discovery Call Blueprint. It's the simplest and most straightforward version of the blueprint. And that's for most of you. That's where you want to start. In fact, all of the results in the case studies have been achieved with this approach. So what is step one? Step one is outreach. And this is simple. We're going to reach out to our ideal prospect on LinkedIn to get their attention. However, a lot of folks still think you can only send 100 connection requests a week and that's this and that's it on LinkedIn. Well, I got to tell you, here's the deal. Elementary school is over and we're not in Kansas anymore, right? We are going to leverage LinkedIn to the max to send high quality, high converting messages to our ideal prospects. So buckle up, crack open a copy of your favorite LinkedIn automation tool and let's get ripping. Now, there are five main kinds of LinkedIn outreach campaigns that we use. But the, uh, but the most well-known by far is number one, the connect and message campaign. Now, if you're brand new to this world, where have you been? Here, but here's the skinny. The connect and message campaign will automate sending a certain number of connection requests every day to a target list of profiles you choose. Now, you do this normally by copying the, the URL of a sales navigator search that you've created with all the relevant filters and adding it into your automation tool. Sales Navigator is essential and that allows us to create high quality prospecting lists and send a higher volume of messaging because it's a premium service that we have to pay LinkedIn for. The bottom line is we need both to succeed on LinkedIn. It's just a toll booth that we have to pay to access LinkedIn's land of near limitless leads and opportunities. So normally LinkedIn will send between or allow you to send between 100 to 200 connection requests per week. Now, if your account is not brand new then and has some history, it's normally possible to send at least 150 connection requests in a week. In fact, seasoned accounts like mine and those I manage for clients can expect to send around 200 per week. So you can see in this example, this is an example of what of a one week's worth of sending. Um, 192 connection requests, 56 connected, uh, 9% connection success rate. And 70% of people replied after all connecting. It's a, a crazy high engagement rate after connecting. So everyone who accepts your message can now automatically be sent a follow-up message. And that's where we'll invite people to join our group. However, we don't stop with just connecting messaging because there are other campaigns we run that also generate insane returns. Another one that very few people know about, which is killer, is open in-mail. So a few people know that if you're a premium LinkedIn member and you pay for Sales Navigator, for example, then you choose to receive, you can choose to receive messages from other premium members for free. You receive messages for free and the sender sends the messages for free. Now, only a minority of LinkedIn profiles choose to do this, but that's still a lot of people. In my experience, about 20% of all profiles on average, including me. What's great about this is you get to send an in-mail, which is essentially a cold email, completely free without having to send a connection request first and wait for it to be accepted. 
The downside is that LinkedIn still decides how many open emails you can send, but mm. I'm, I aim to send about 20 to 40 a day. And that's still a ton of highly targeted traffic, which generates a stack of qualified leads. And now you can see in this stat here, this is just for one client, one campaign from a seven month period, we've sent 5,042 emails, 100% free, and of which 274 replied, it's a 5.1% reply rate. 5,000 free emails without having to connect, we sent via LinkedIn to our ideal target prospects. That's just one campaign, another campaign, campaign number two. Campaign number three is group messages. Few people also know about this too. But if you're a member of a LinkedIn group, you can send messages to other group members for free, even if they do not have an open email profile and you're not connected with them. This is a literal goldmine, as LinkedIn will allow us to send even more group messages than open emails. I've, in fact, I've sent thousands of group messages for clients and generated a crazy number of valuable leads. Now, the easiest message in the world is essentially, hey, I see we're both in the same group reference the group name, would you like to join my group too? That's essentially what it, the message structure template is. Outreach this simple and effective is a literal cheat mode as you can comfortably send 30 to 50 group messages per day, if not more. So here's an example of a group campaign for again, just for one client, 8,572 messages we sent. Again, we didn't need to connect with them before. They didn't need to have an open profile with an open email and these are just people who were in the same group as we were. And 582 of those people replied, which is a 7.3%. Uh, oh, sorry, this one here, 852, 8,572 messages sent, 582 replied, that's a 6.8% reply rate. So that's for the full campaign. This is just for the, the 12 month stats here in this image. That's uh, and just another campaign, but we're not finished. We have existing connections message campaigns. Again, this is incredibly, a lot of people overlook this and only focus on the connecting and messaging with new people. So I was consulting some agency owners recently and, and, they, and they showed me that their client, who's an expert in his niche, has over 3,300 connections on LinkedIn. So I asked them this question. Have you sent messages to his relevant connections yet? And the reply I got was just silence. Now, if you have relevant connections, this is, this is the first campaign you should ever run as most LinkedIn automation tools will comfortably allow you to send 70, 80, even as many as 100 messages a day. I typically like to stay around 70 or 80. I don't like to be greedy. So, but when you combine all four campaign types, you should easily be sending 150 to 200 connection requests and potentially 400 messages plus per week. And that's just for one LinkedIn profile. Some of my clients have three or more profiles. In fact, I have a client now with five profiles that I am managing to pump like crazy every single day. That's some real hyper-targeted volume and it converts like crazy. So this is an example of messaging and existing, existing connections. Three months, that's 2,345 messages sent. 117 reply, it's a 5% reply rate. So that's more than 700, that's nearly 800 messages per month that we are sending for this particular campaign. And that's just the direct messaging of existing connections. So that's campaign number four. Campaign number five is direct invitation campaigns. And by far the fewest people know about this. This is the, one of the biggest secrets. So you'll notice a pattern here right? But there is another type of outreach we can do that virtually nobody knows about. And you know what, full disclaimer, I didn't even know this was possible until a year ago too. And I'm supposed to be an expert in this stuff, right? But as soon as I discovered it, I started to take full advantage to generate new group members for my clients. Now, once your group is set up, and we'll talk more about that in 5.2, you can directly invite your existing connections to join. Yes, just like you can invite level one connections to attend events, you can actually do the same with groups. So here's a screenshot. Here we've selected 50 people from our existing level one connections, and we've selected the ones we want, we've excluded the ones we don't, and we're going to send an invitation to all 50 immediately, just like that, completely 
free of charge. Now, I haven't found an automation tool that does this yet. So we do it manually with VAs and my team. And this also means we can be selective of who we invite, i.e. we only invite people that meet our ideal client profile. This keeps the quality high, so we don't let people into our group we don't want. Not that that's really a problem, even if they don't. But the key thing to know about inviting people to groups is that they're pre-approved. So they will automatically be added into the group. So generally speaking, it is worth only inviting people that meet the criteria that you're looking for who have the potential to be prospects. Now, if someone gets into your group and you don't want them, you can always remove them once they're in. There's no problem. Even with just inviting away en masse, no problem at all because you control who is in and who's not in your group. That's the power of running your own group. Now, LinkedIn won't let you go crazy and invite hundreds of people a day. When you send too many invitations, it just gives you an error message and stops working for the rest of the day. But my testing will comfortably let you send 50 direct invitations per day. So again, we're not greedy. We just send out 250 direct invitations per week, 50 per day, Monday to Friday, to relevant level one connections and invite them directly to join our group. But that's another 250 messages or invitations sent per week on top of the other four campaigns. So this is what it looks like when you stack all these outreach campaigns together. In essence, you can be sending a thousand outreach messages per week. And that's exactly what we do in many cases. Because when you combine the outreach volume across all these different campaign types, the numbers really start to stack up. So certainly in some weeks we're sending well over a thousand outreach messages per week, all with only one LinkedIn profile. So remember, this includes all invitations, connection requests, and different message types combined. And as you can see here, it's a high volume outreach with just one LinkedIn profile, some weeks more than a thousand outreach messages in total across all the different campaign types. So total messages sent, which doesn't include the group invitation. So we need to add the group invitations to it. And that doesn't include the connection requests. So you have to add the campaign messages plus the connection requests, plus the direct invitations, add that together and you have more than a thousand touch points some weeks. Now, again, if you really want to scale, just use three accounts instead of one. And you're going to have so much outreach going on. Your clients, if you run this for clients, they're going to think you're Merlin the damn magician. So now we've greased our outreach wheels to get some serious attention. It's time to focus on the critical second step that most people miss, capturing that attention. So getting attention is great. It's an essential first step in the process. But if you stop there, you just wasted an enormous satin sized opportunity. And we are not about to do that. So let's talk about groups and the advantages of groups for capturing and owning attention. See, once people know who you are, you want to bring them over to a place you control. This is critical. This process is called owning attention. Simply put, this is the ability to reach back out to our prospects over and over again whenever we want. Because you see, there's a compound effect when you own attention. Most people only ever do linear one-to-one -one outreach. They send one email or one DM at a time to one person. But when you own attention, now you can reach out to people one-to-many as well as one-to-one. -one. Now, you might be thinking, okay, this is pretty obvious, right? Yeah, I build a list. I build a, a database. Of, but how many businesses are actually doing it? And even those who do something only ever do one thing to own an audience. And that is why they're missing an enormous opportunity. And what is the most common thing people do to own an attention and build an audience? Well, naturally using email. It's building email lists and potentially using lead magnets to build those email lists to own attention. So this is the most common form of attention capture, an opt-in form to put people onto an email or SMS list you can follow up with. Now, don't get me wrong, email lists are absolutely awesome, but we want to play on an entirely different game to everybody else. Because remember, our goal here is to book a ridiculous number of discovery calls as quickly as possible with maximum efficiency. We're not wasting time and messing around. Now, the reality is that it's just not that easy to get normal, everyday email opt-in leads to immediately agree to a discovery call. Because think about it. How many lead magnets have you ever downloaded? Or email lists have you joined? 
And how many times have you been invited to a call soon after? Now, unless you're responding to an ad when you should be hounded by all possible means until you book a call, then probably never. Which makes sense, right? Because doesn't it feel a bit weird? Because you'd be thinking, no, I don't want to jump on a call just because I've downloaded your ebook. Instead, your strategy is to drive new opt-ins to a VSL or a calendar booking page and try and sell them and hope that they convert into self-booking an appointment. And maybe they will, but if they'll do, if they do, it'll be at a much lower level than the approach we take instead. And this is where the magic of groups and community gives us an almost unfair advantage. So using groups and communities to own attention. So don't get me wrong, email lists are great. I've made millions with email lists and product launches and evergreen drip sequences. But here's the thing. I know a company makes eight figures teaching other businesses how to get clients using groups. And their head appointment setter on interview wants accidentally drop some gold. He made the following absolutely crystal clear. that The vast majority of new discovery call appointments they book happen immediately after someone joins their group. In their case, they use Facebook groups. In our case, it's LinkedIn groups. But here's the reality. Both work just as well as each other. However, I know what you're asking yourself now. So let's address it before we move on. When should you use a Facebook group and when should you use a LinkedIn group? Well, it depends entirely on your strategy and principal traffic source. Because if that's LinkedIn, then use LinkedIn groups. If it's Facebook or IG, then use Facebook groups. Because trying to bring someone from Facebook to a LinkedIn group or vice versa is just going to be harder. You're asking someone to switch channels from their favorite station to somewhere else. Not impossible, just expect lower conversion rates. So really, there is no need to overcomplicate this. If you're targeting LinkedIn members, because you know they're the highest quality prospects you'll find anywhere on the planet, then a LinkedIn group works great and has a ton of advantages over other platforms. However, there are three ginormous sized myths about groups and communities. Myth number one, don't I need to post in a group daily or multiple times per week? Get asked this all the time. If I create a group, don't I need to be posting content like a crazy demon 24 seven, 365? 100% false. In fact, Posting too much can be a real problem. Why? Because over-familiarity can reduce your status delta and cause indifference towards you. In other words, posting too much can potentially bore people and make them consider you less of an authority, which may cause them to ignore you. So you don't need tons of content for your group to be effective in, in what you want, which is to be setting consistent, high-quality appointments. And some of the clients I've been setting the most appointments for barely post at all, maybe once a month, if that. Now, some do more often, once or twice a week, and that's all good. It's not a problem, but it hasn't made a clear, substantial difference to the amount of appointments being booked for them. Now, myth number two is, don't I need to get tons of likes and comments when I post? This is the next most popular question I get. If I don't get lots of engagements, likes and comments when I post my group, doesn't it look bad? Well, the main difference between a group and a community is that a community has a lot more peer-to-peer interaction, i.e. posts, comments, etc., without the group founder necessarily being involved. But here's the thing. We do not need to build chatty communities in order to generate quality booked discovery call appointments. There's nothing wrong with the communities with high interaction. There's a lot that's great about them. But let me repeat, it is not... It's 100% not necessary to create crazy levels of engagement and interaction to serve our business purpose. It is important, however, to name your group correctly and make it crystal clear who it's for, which brings me conveniently to myth number three. Don't, my, don't groups need to be branded with my company or product name? Now, the short answer is sometimes, yes, that makes sense, but most of the time it actually doesn't. If you're a big authority in your industry with good brand awareness, by all means, create a branded group. I have a client that does 300 million plus in revenue, revenue in digital transformation. They have tier one banks and world leading brands and household names as clients. They do a bunch of cool stuff and they're major partners with billion dollar industry giants. In their case, it 100% makes sense to leverage the authority and recognition of their brand. And if I was Alex or Mosey, all right, he, he, <laughs> He could create his own group based on his name alone. He doesn't need to call it the Small Business Owners Network or similar. But if your brand contains 
keywords that speak to your market, then in many cases, you have the best of both worlds, which is why my brand name, my content brand, I call it audience and clients contains a promise. It's clear that what I am, the focus is of this branch, generating an audience or building an audience and generating clients from that audience. That is what audience and clients is all about. And by the way, that's my LinkedIn group and you can go to audienceandclients.com and that will take you to the group where you can uh, request to join. And after I preview and let you in, you can get access to the doc from this video and other docs from the LinkedIn secrets playbook that I showed you earlier as well. So my own audience and clients group includes the promise, the name, and that resonates with my target audience. It's, it's really founders. And so the number one thing every group needs to have, however, is a clear, who is this for statement on the banner? In my case, B2B tech advisors and founders, because those are the people that I've worked with and got clearly great results with that I've shared with you so far. So this is an example of a client of mine. <clears throat> and their LinkedIn group has a name that describes the situation that, that their ideal prospects can easily identify with, as well as a clear who this is for statement. So their group name is SQL Server Data Teams. And that's a name that describes a workplace situation their ideal, ideal target audience will identify and resonate with, i.e. data teams, DBAs, and leaders who manage dozens or hundreds of SQL Server instances. If you're in that situation, then this group is for you. It's not about the company name. It's not about the product. It's about the, the situation that their ideal prospect is in because they are the people who they can serve and add value to the most. So we're not leaving this that understanding to chance. Right? The goal is always in marketing to seek clarity above all else. So we spell it out in spell out who the group is for in that sub headline. So don't be cute. Don't be funny. We seek comprehension before influence before we can influence and persuade people to take any kind of action. Is there any kind of doubt in your mind whether this group is relevant for you or not? Perfect. That's exactly the idea. Now, at this point, you might be a little bit confused, right? Because this new information I've shared with you seems to probably contradict everything you've likely been taught about how to create and build and run successful chatty community groups. Don't worry. I'm going to make this really simple. In fact, let me share the only thing you really need to understand about why groups are so powerful. Groups are first and foremost about authority. That is the secret source, nothing else. As the founder owner of your group, you are the clear expert. It's just like writing a book, but without the blood, sweat, and tears. And just like becoming an author, it's implicitly, automatically, and subconsciously assumed you must be a domain expert about your group's topic. What's more, as a group owner, you have the power to approve or disapprove entry to your group. Now, that's a subtle but very important power frame. And power frames are foundational prerequisites for making sales. Once you liberate your mind from the two myths I've just squashed for you, and you understand the unique positioning advantage that being a group owner gives you, then nothing can hold you back from taking full advantage of the LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint and start booking qualified discovery calls on demand whenever you want. Apart from perhaps one thing, how do you get people to join your group and then invite them to a discovery call? So that's the next thing. Let's break that down for you. That is step three, invitation. You see, now that we have our, our own high authority group in place, along with our members, it's time to really start we're making making money, which is to start reaching out to our group members and booking discovery calls. Thankfully, there are only two steps to this part, both which are super simple and straightforward. So step number one, qualifying prospects before inviting them to a call. So one of the many great things about groups is that you get to choose who to let in or not. And you literally make the rules, right? So most group owners will be fairly inclusive and lenient on who they approve. And exactly how much will so will vary from group to group. And in my case, I'll let almost anybody into my group as I'm, I don't care if they're competitors or not. I'm not sensitive to that. However, one of my clients recently stopped allowing anybody from the big four consultancy firms, KPMG, PwC, EY, Deloitte, as this particular client offers professional services and direct competition to those four. And that's entirely their call. They make the shots and they can change their targeting and, and who they let in at will. 
But it's one thing to let somebody into the group. It's entirely another to reach out and invite them on the discovery call. You see, we want to be 100% certain that every person we reach out to is a market qualified prospect, meaning they fit our criteria for a potential prospect or client. And the way we do this is to create a simple sheet with clear instructions for what constitutes someone being qualified or not. So for example, everyone's happy to approve internationally based members in their group, but if they're a US based financial advisor, it only makes sense to target people who live in the USA. Right? They, they are they're only going to be the ones who will be qualified for a call. So here's the sheet. In this case, a VA will review the profile of each member manually to decide and confirm if they're qualified for a call or not. If they are, they move them to a qualified for a call status in our CRM tracking system. So they're not qualified if they're outside the US. They are qualified if they, if they are residing in the US. We can tell that from their LinkedIn profile. If they have any of these job titles, they are not qualified. They're essentially direct competitors. And But if they have any of these, they are qualified. So we're just making it very easy distinction so that the, the person reviewing them can make that judgment. So once we, we, we have confirmed they are qualified, we move them over to a stage in a pipeline. Now, again, you could use a spreadsheet to do this, right? You could just copy and paste, you know, lots of ways of doing this. But at the volume, the scale we're operating at, a CRM really is a tool you should be using and taking people through different stages in your sales funnel and, and sales process. And so this one of the early stages here is they're qualified. These people are qualified for a call. And now we have a growing base of prospects that we are 100% certain are market qualified. And we can start the call invitation outreach process itself. So these are 86 people here. They're qualified. They are ready for us to reach out to them, invite them on a call whenever we decide to do so. So let's talk about that next step. Inviting market qualified prospects to a discovery call. So now we're ready to reach out to people, and invite them to a call. So here's the thing. Every one of these prospects is market qualified member of the group. They're all extremely valuable, important. And you've seen the stats, right? We're getting 29% calls agreed and 18% calls booked from every single person we're reaching out to and inviting on a call on average. We're not wasting these people precisely because they are extremely valuable potential prospects. And because they're so valuable, we want to guarantee that the right message gets delivered to the right person at the right time. Now, I'm afraid there's no automation software on the planet that can guarantee that outcome for you. So at this point, we don't use software. We send these critical messages to our ideal prospects manually via LinkedIn message. That's the only way we can guarantee that they get delivered successfully. And once we send them a message, we move them to the call offered stage in the CRM. So 23 people now have been moved to the call offered stage. So what message do we send them to persuade them to agree to a call? Well, I've developed this thing called the 53 word message. That's what I call it. It's the exact same 53 word message where only with the name of the group changed. And we use that with every single prospect. There's, there's precisely zero time wasted customizing or personalizing it. However, full disclosure, at times we have and, and customized and personalized messages. So for example, if there was a really small number of people we wanted to reach out to, or they were extremely, extremely high value, then there might be a situation in which we might want to personalize each message. And we can do that because we're sending it manually and we can see the history of any interactions. But normally, but normally, that's only, I say, where those prospects are, uh, that we're targeting are very small in number or extremely high value. So what this means is by not having to customize or personalize it, we can send messages faster. And it's very easy for a VA that's $5 an hour to easily copy, paste, and send those messages all day long. So remember, 29% agree to a call from this 53-word message, which is exactly the same regardless of the group, niche, industry, or location. It just works. So this is what the 53-word message looks like. It's pretty simple. However, I'm, I'm not going to give away the exact language word for word because it's just way too valuable to give away. Like my private clients are using it to make bank. They don't want me to share the gold with the rest of the world and have them copy paste the same message verbatim. But I'm not going to leave you hanging though. Here's the thing. If you want to know really what the message is, just DM me on Twitter X or LinkedIn and I'll tell you more about what it is. Here's something I can tell you though. We send manual follow-up messages once per week for two weeks after the initial message. That's a pretty low-key but still professionally persistent cadence for follow-up. 
And the follow-up messages produce a ton of calls as well as people actually thanking us for the follow-up. Now I know you really just want to see one of our best performing messages. And I don't blame you. This stuff is super valuable. But before I share one, it's important to understand why this message works. You see, I'm trying to teach you how to fish for the rest of your life and not just throw a single fish your way. So the key to success with messaging on all social platforms, especially LinkedIn, is to be concise and casual and professionally persistent. Because most messages are way too long, formal, and very spammy. Also, most people give up way too soon in the follow-up process. And if you follow those two principles, your success in the DMs will go through the roof. So here is an example for you. Now, this is perfect if you have leads that have agreed to a call but haven't yet booked. Now, for these leads specifically, you want to send them a message. Hi, name. Is this a better week for our call? Now, I guarantee you this message lands. If you, if you send this message and you, if you send it to people that you, so this, when this message will land, I guarantee this message will land you calls from people you would have otherwise given up on, 100%. So go try it out for yourself and let me know exactly how you get on. So the final step four in our process is the discovery call. The final step really is just to monitor replies to the call invitation messages and follow-up reminders inside of our LinkedIn outreach tool. And most responses are positive. So as soon as we see one, we capture the response in the CRM and we move them to the call agreed stage. There we go, call agreed. So the CRM stage change automates sending a Slack notification to the client so they can follow up and book the call in their diary. And most calls are booked simply by following up with the prospect via LinkedIn messages. The most effective way normally is just to suggest one or two time slots manually rather than just sending a calendar booking link. However, and you can see an example here. How about Thursday 24th at 3 p.m. Eastern? Sure, that works for me. However, there is a place in some circumstances to use a booking link, especially if you're in markets that are familiar with calendar booking links like technology, sales, or marketing related niches. The key is that this market needs, um, the market needs to be used to using booking links. So friction is minimal. However, the messaging still matters. And you can see in this example below here, for your convenience is an important phrase that includes its compliance. That, that, that works for me. Here is my Calendly for your convenience. With this volume of activity and calls being booked every week, using sales CRM pipeline to track activity stages is essential. So I set this up for clients. So all they have to do is to drag the prospect card to the correct stage after they booked or held a call. In fact, some clients have their team members, assistants do it. Doesn't matter. Somebody needs to. And that's it. See, sales pipeline CRMs can also produce the weekly KPI tracker stats that I shared earlier. They produce consistent data that can be relied upon to assess the performance and identify areas to focus on next. So in summary, booking calls that have been agreed is an important part of the whole process, one that can be easily optimized for efficient performance. But before I go any further, let me just share with you five reasons why generating consistent discovery calls on demand is so critical right now. So you've seen the LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint and the results that is generated in just a few months. So let's take a minute to understand why this approach is so valuable and much needed. Now, this amazed me when I saw this, but this is the volume of data information created, captured, copied, and consumed worldwide from 2010-2020 with forecast 2021-25 on uh, Statista website. So look at this date, the amount of data in zettabytes. Look at the exponential growth in information being shared, consumed, created every single day. It's just going up exponentially and it's only going to go up more and more and more year on year. But you probably like me have no idea what a zettabyte of information actually is. Well, this is a zettabyte. One billion terabytes. Now you might have heard of a terabyte before because you've probably got a terabyte in a if you've got a, a big hard drive or something that you use Uh, on your network or on your computer. So a thousand gigabytes is one terabyte. A thousand terabytes is one petabyte. And a million terabytes is one exabyte. And one billion terabytes is one zettabyte. That is the quantity of information being created, generated, shared, 
every single day and only going up, right? So it is reasonable to conclude that an unfathomably large amount of data is being created every year, and that amount is growing year on year at a scarily exponential rate. But what does that actually mean for us as business owners? Well, people are more selective and demanding than ever before, right? Since the rise of the internet, social media, people now have access to vast, never seen before in human history amounts of information, as well as a plethora of options they can take, including above all doing nothing. And as a result, they've become more knowledgeable, discerning, and focus on finding best value for their money. And people now expect personalized experiences, exceptional customer service, and high quality products or services at a minimum. In sales, personalized proposals and high engagement strategies are key to selling premium prices. Now, technology has destroyed the barriers to entry in many industries. And as a result, there's millions of businesses offering fundamentally the same products and services which means your prospects are being bombarded with repetitive marketing messages, making it harder for you and business, other businesses to grab their attention and differentiate yourselves effectively. So your ideal prospects are immune to generic marketing offers. So you ignore them, they ignore them, and then, which creates a real challenge for you as an owner to stand out from your competition. There's also an ever increasing amount of media competing for your customers' attentions. See, they're drowning in a flood of short and long form content, podcasts, blogs, emails, stories, and reels. And to stand out, business owners need to compel, develop compelling marketing strategies outside of the norm. Creating a personalized sales engagement experience is one way to capture and maintain the attention of your ideal future clients amid this cacophony of social media noise. Now, authentic one-to-one -one interactions are increasingly key to influencing your prospects' buying behavior because these people are frustrated, turned off by lazy traditional marketing tactics, and instead they crave genuine personalized interactions. Very simply, building trust and creating a personal connection with your prospects are essential if you want to influence their buying decisions. And as a business owner or sales and marketing lead, you need to create those authentic experiences to build relationships rather than push tired, generalized, and outdated sales messages. Businesses that do that will create an army of loyal, high-value clients who are far more likely to buy from them again and again, as well as refer them to their own network. So customers are also increasingly comfortable using online technology like Zoom for one-to-one -one discussions. Um, so... No surprise, since, especially since COVID, with advances in technology, uh, have accelerated the adoption and acceptance of online communication tools. And customers really now expect and often prefer the convenience of virtual meetings and consultations with service providers rather than traditional in-person interactions. Businesses need the skills and the tools to effectively engage people via online platforms and provide a great virtual experience, for example, during one-to-one -one calls. So what this means for you, why is why this matters. Your prospects are overwhelmed with information. They're bombarded with marketing offers that all sound the same. They seek real world relevant information that's valuable to them before they buy. Key before they buy. They crave authentic, meaningful one-to-one -one interactions with businesses and their staff. And they trust organizations that demonstrate transparency, integrity, and vulnerability. Now imagine what things would look like if you didn't have to deal with any of those problems. So here's the only question you really need to ask yourself. Before we get to that, just imagine yourself in 12 months time with the following already happened or in place in your business. A LinkedIn connection network with an extra three to 4,000 targeted connections who closely match your ideal future client profile. A LinkedIn company page with an extra 500 to 750 followers you can reach out to and target with high performing ads and offers. A LinkedIn group with around 1,000 to 2,000 members who know, like, and trust you. And you can reach out to via email as well as DM to invite to events or hop on a call. About 180 to 360 discovery calls booked with your ideal future clients who are also your LinkedIn group members. About 110, 220 discovery calls already held with the same prospects about 77 to 144 sales qualified leads actively in your main sales pipeline with numerous deals closed with five, six, or even seven figures plus. And a proven seven fig, a proven evergreen system that adds targeted new connections, page followers, group members, and book calls every single month, month after month, like clockwork. And also 
a feeling of profound relief that you no longer need to worry, fret, or stress about where to find your next client. You can generate results and clients on demand from your LinkedIn group members. So let me just check. Are you visualizing that in your mind already? Because if you are, here's the, here's the question. What would that mean for you and your business? I really want you to stop right now, pause this video, and consider what you're doing right now and re reflect on where you're currently and how this situation would impact your work and life. I don't know about you, but truly valuable opportunities have been rare for my business. When they have come along, they've truly changed everything. And today, well, I potentially have an opportunity for you. So if achieving those kind of results would be valuable for you, you really only have two options. Option one is you can go ahead and set up your own LinkedIn outreach campaigns, your own group, your own messaging, your own CRM tracking. Now, for some of you, that would be 100% the best course of action. If you have a good team, sizable resources, up-to-date skills, and enough time to implement a project like this. However, there's also an alternative. Option two is to book a 20-minute walkthrough call where I'll privately show you real-world examples of our live campaigns getting 30 to 40% connection requests on accepted on average, our highest-performing follow-up message that prints new LinkedIn group members 24-7. I only use and share this template with private clients, but I'll share it with you on our call. The secret source group invitation messaging that converts so well I can never share it publicly the CRM automation secrets that makes tracking even thousands of prospects a little breeze, and how we effortlessly convert group members into booked and held calls, as well as red hot pipeline sales qualified leads. So if that makes sense to you, I'll explain exactly how you can get access to the entire LinkedIn group to discovery call blueprint implemented 100% done for you in your business too. So the nightmare of worrying about where and how to book qualified calls that convert so that you can scale your business will finally become. See, so if you're qualified, here's what you need to do. It's very simple. Shoot me a message via DM on LinkedIn or Twitter. Just say blueprint and then let's chat. Now, remember, my clients are booking every week on average 7.4 qualified discovery calls at hold. But I want you to get even better results than that. If that sounds interesting, interesting, then reach out to me soon as I can only offer a limited number of walkthrough calls due to my extensive commitments already to my long-term private clients. And finally, just a reminder, make sure you connect with me on Twitter X and LinkedIn. These are the links at LinkedIn underscore King on Twitter X and that's the UI, my LinkedIn profile URL. And especially make sure you get me even more value and my other documents and my other resources and trainings Join the audience and clients communities on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And those are the links. And that's it for me. Take care. I'll speak to you next time.